next stop is on the radar radio. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Yeah. Yes, sir, baby. On the radar radio. Yo, special guest in the building. Malizan in the building. What's up? Welcome to the show. So, like, I told, I said this before the interview, but I got to give a big shout out to our mutual friend, um, Caribou. Because um, yes, Carol was actually, uh, well, Carol played a, definitely played a part in, in, in us making this happen. Because I had mm-hmm. Senior from the block. Of course, shout out my brother Zay. Um, and Carol had sent it to Cal. And then probably like a couple days after my sis, I yelled it, hit me up and told me that you were going to be in town. Um, so right. I, it just kind of, everything just kind of lined up yeah, perfectly with did. this. So I'm excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. What is your relationship with, with our, uh, our very eclectic friend? Who, Kara? Yes. <laughs> That's my girl. I've known her for a few years, um, just like from mutual friends. Mm-hmm. But uh, she's from Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta, like. We run in the same circles, so... Atlanta's a small place. Yeah, if, yeah, for sure. But we got a lot of love for each other. It's funny, because like, I feel like... Obviously, you have been doing the modeling thing before all the music, right? Mm-hmm. And she was... Um, I mean, it's public knowledge. I'm sure everybody knows. Uh, Yachty's assistant. And she was doing mm-hmm. other stuff yeah. before. I think it's interesting how like both of you guys have gone from these other career paths that you were on mm-hmm. to now this, too. Yeah. Have you guys ever spoken about that? How it's like, oh, we were both doing so much different shit before... All the music stuff. Yeah, really I mean, out? like, I want to say I started hanging out with her before, like, the music, or maybe when she was when she just started getting into it. Mm. Um, but I had no clue until like she did an interview and I saw that she was Yachty's assistant and stuff like that. I was like, oh wow, that's like actually really interesting. But I mean, these types of things like shape shape people. Like, For you sure. gotta have. A, it's good to have a little bit of experience um, before going into making music. Like, right. It's. Yeah. Because I know that she never thought that she would be doing this. Did you, when you were pursuing modeling and you were kind of traveling the world and doing, you know, what you were doing, was this ever in the back of your head too? Of course. I mean, like, I I grew up writing, singing. Um, my family uh, is in the music um, spaces too. Yeah. So um, it was always something that I wanted to do. Mm. Um, it was always a dream of mine to be an artist. Um, I think... Being a model really opened me up just to have more confidence in myself right. and more confidence in my voice. And um, it allowed me to travel all over the world um, to get the experience I really needed mm. to like be the artist that I am today. Um, just like specifically because of the music that we are making, it's dance music. Right. And um, that's what I seen when I was traveling all over the world. I seen everybody dancing. And I was like, damn, like, I want, I want to bring that home. Like, I want mm. people to start dancing because it's a thing. Like, people don't be dancing in the club. Right. It's something that you notice, like, <laughs> it's I mean, crazy. if you're in Atlanta, for sure. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, so we want, we want to bring that back home and we want to get people dancing again. That's the biggest thing we want to do. Right. And I feel like dance music, it was, uh, I feel like two years ago, it's kind of when, like, this form of dance music, you know, kind of started becoming more popular and like the urban hip hop space too. Like right. there's like different lanes of it, right? There's obviously the type that you make. Beyonce had this incredible small, mm-hmm. you know, small little album that came right. out. Yeah, but then exactly. on top of that, you have like artists who make like different types of dance music. Like up here we have like Rio Vaz and Kani and, and things like that. So it's like it's a very interesting space to be in mm-hmm. because like the music that you make is kind of like it's very it has like those inklings of like what is going on in America right. but then like I like foreign TV so I watch like a lot of like mm-hmm. other shows from like Europe and whatnot but it's very reminiscent of like the the rave scene yeah, or like yeah. the, the the club scene out in like mm-hmm. Ibiza or like in Spain and whatnot too exactly. which is, I think is like super cool about it as well yeah, that's and that's what, what that all, do, that's where you draw that from yeah exactly. did you ever go to Ibiza no, I've always wanted to go there. You know, I hear it's not that great. Really? Yeah, I keep out like Damn. you be on TikTok, right? Yeah. You ever like get on like those like random TikTok like um mm-hmm. like when you're just scrolling and you come across information you didn't want to know? Right. And it was like <laughs> and it was like this one person was like, "Let me tell you why not to go to Ibiza." And they're like, "They you think it's all glamorous, but it's like mm-hmm. then they were like showing all the other shit. I was like, "Oh wow, I like Damn. All you ever see is like the good shit though, you yeah. know what I'm saying?" Yeah. But I would I would say like don't let one person's experience Of course. Like, you got to figure it out for yourself because people are going to say what they're going to say. You right. just have to see if you like it. Was there a specific moment abroad 
like when you were in like a club or in a party or or even a show that kind of was like really that clicking moment like oh i'm gonna make this type of dance music mm -hmm. and, and like mix it with like you know the american culture that i was raised on mm -hmm. is there like one memory yeah i mean i have so many um because i've like taken taken those experiences from different places so it's like in London, of course, like they're big in the dance community and yeah. rave scene. Um, so they're really popping over there. Paris. Um, I will say like a very specific memory that I've had was being in Ghana mm. and um, going to a club out there. And it was just crazy. Like we're like driving to the club and there's like like people on like motorcycle like just like everything that they have going on over there is mm. just like so cool like there's like people like driving motorcycles like like popping wheelies popping yeah. wheelies and shit on the way to the club we get to the club they they just making a whole show out of it outside the club we go into the club and it's just like it's the music is just like damn i i want to do this like that mm. that that was my moment where i was like I can do this and I can I can make it my own thing and I can put my put uh my spin on it right. and bring it back home. So I want to say that's that's my You were in Ghana, that's fire. Yeah. Were they doing like cuz obviously Afro beats and Afro drill and all that they they have over there. Did they have like this type of club music over there too? Was this also prevalent or no? They have yeah, I want to say they have like uh predominantly uh dance music, okay. Afro beats, um on the piano like yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, it's like a mix. Do you have family in Ghana too, or this was just like a vacation? I don't, yeah. It was like a little quick vac vacation. But you know, you talked about like having the musical background. Like, um, I saw that, like, um, I don't know if it was like another interview, but you had talked about like your mom being part of making the band and mm -hmm. all this. Like, were you, like, how young were you when you really kind of like started singing? And was it around the time that your mom was on the show? Like, how does, how does this all kind of come together to then lead into like the Malie we know now? Um,. I want to say as early as I can remember, I've always been dancing and singing. Mm. Like probably since I came out the womb, to be honest. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I can't really trace it to like a far specific back. moment. Yeah, yeah, a specific moment, but I've just known it. That's all I've ever known, really, like since I was young. So um, it's embedded in me. Right. Well, things have been going well for you lately. You just announced um, you're going to be on Lovers and Friends. Yes. Incredible. Thank you. Um, I'm excited. I'm personally very excited about that, too, because I love the lineup on those festivals, and I love mm -hmm. like seeing younger people on it as well, too. Yeah. Because like, I think like having that mix of you know the legends that we all know and love, and then also, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's important that... Right, like the new school Having the new school, because there's always yeah. like that kind of like, oh, like do the legends appreciate the new stuff right you yeah. know and i think that that's really cool that tim added you to that too because mm -hmm. i think like you know especially with like dance music right now having that type of moment i think that that's really important right yeah um and i and i love the the tim remix to gag too oh i love it too how has it's he so been good. serving as like a mentor for you these past like couple months or however long you guys have been working together well, since we did the Four Shooters video, mm. um, I want to say like a few days, probably like just even a couple days after we did the video, um, I checked my phone and I seen that Timberland tagged me in a post and I was like, what? And I went to it and it was a, his reaction video and I, everything just like started going crazy like since that moment. Um, but we all came together and um, we did the videos yep. and... It's honestly just like being with family. It's so it's so special and it's so rare also, which is why I'm so grateful to even mm. have like such a music legend be see see the potential in me and right. um it really like affirms affirms what I'm doing and just makes me more confident to keep doing what I'm doing. So. Is it weird for you to see it happen this quickly too? Like I don't think so. I mean because I started, I started really focusing on music about mm. three years ago, um, and "Gag" was the first song that we um, cut. So gotcha. um, I wasn't really like I, I didn't have the confidence that I had now. Mm. So now, like stepping into it um, and seeing just how long it took me to get to this place, um, it was needed because it's like. It doesn't seem like it's going as fast now because I waited yeah. like three years to figure out who I was. I'm now like ready to do what I need to and do. Who who did you have to figure out you had to be? 
like in that time, in that three years? I just like, had to figure out what I wanted and mm-hmm. I had to travel and I had to have experience and um, I, I don't think you can really put a time on those things sometimes. Right, yeah. You kind of just have to like figure it out your, for yourself because everybody's different. But um, yeah, that, that really shaped me into who I am today and made me realize like, oh, like music has always been the answer. Right. But it is coming at you fast now. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, now, I mean, yeah. Now it's coming at you <laughs> it fast. It is. I mean, every, every day is something new, but right. what it's it, cool. Ha, have it's you been, had the time to like really like accept and take in all these like blessings or is everything kind of like moving at the speed of light? I think. Where you can appreciate these moments. I take, I take every moment as it comes mm. and I just try to stay super present in who I am and where I'm at. And anytime I have the slightest bit of time to just like thank God or just be grateful, I right. think it it catches me up with how fast things are going. Mm. So I don't really feel like left behind. Right, right. I like that. And you have a couple songs out right now. So like musically, what space are you in? You know, the festival. When's the festival? What's what's the date for the festival? May fourth. I May think. May fourth. Yeah. Okay. So we got a couple months. So like, mm-hmm. are you trying trying to put out like a little EP before then? Like, what is kind of like. The rollout, because obviously your music very lends much to like summertime and, and right, out here yeah. in America, right? And we're getting, and it's about to be spring. So like, mm-hmm. where are you kind of at musically there right now with what you're creating and how are you getting ready for like the festival, mm-hmm. but also like the rest of the year and summertime and shit? I think definitely Gag has so much more life. It, it mm. needs to live a little bit, which is what we're giving it space for. Um, but we have so many other songs that we are ready to just drop when when that when the project is done um which should be like within the next couple of months yeah um we'll see how it rolls out like between we'll just see how it goes honestly i don't really know what what the timing is going to be like but uh it's going to be quick it's but the project's in the oven though yeah yeah we've sure. been cooking well look i went on your twitter right i love your twitter Thank you. Right? <laughs> I wrote down some of your tweets, right? Oh my God, really? It's not bad. Don't worry. Don't nobody looks stressed <laughs> out. All right. It's it's all good stuff. It's nothing bad, right? I want to go over a few things, right? Uh, cause I like I like going on artists' Twitter because I feel like these interviews can get really boring and monotonous when you talk about the same thing over I and over feel again. You, yeah. And I know like the real shit that you guys like to talk about is mm-hmm. on most of most of your time, your mm-hmm. Twitter, right? So we're gonna talk about a couple things, right? Okay. On Valentine's Day, you had tweeted it isn't the same bad, y'all. I heard everybody like breathe for a second. <laughs> It isn't yeah, too, my Twitter is fine. Yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> it isn't too much to ask to be able to cl- go live on your close friends. Like, why do you want to go live on your close friends? Because. Isn't that FaceTime? No. How, I How many people add, do you have on your close friends? I have like 30 people on my close friends. See, that's not a lot. I can't FaceTime 30 people at one time. That's a Zoom call. But why do you need to tell, but what, but what do you have to tell all those 30 people at one time that you can't just post? I just want it to be specifically to those people and not everybody else because also it's like, there's so many new new people coming every <laughs> single day onto my Instagram. And sometimes I just want to talk to my homies. Like, you know what I mean? No, no shade to anybody. Like, keep it coming. But I go on live all the time also. Yeah. Like I do my I do my thing. Little one too. But two. sometimes I just, you know, maybe wanna rant a little bit or have then, some okay. fun with my friends on so, live. <laughs> hypothetically, right? I'm just gonna throw this out there, right? Let's say you go on live on your close friends, right? How many people can be in a FaceTime at once? Like eight, nine, ten people? I have no idea. Well, let's say it's like ten people. Because I've definitely mm-hmm. been on a ten-person FaceTime before. What? Let's say it's like a ten... Don't ask. Let's <laughs> say it's been a ten-person FaceTime, right? Mm-hmm. What if only like eight people come to the lab? That could have been a FaceTime. Just... Um, that's a good question. <laughs> but I think Instagram should have that option. As to go live. I, yeah, I'm yeah, surprised that they don't, though. Right. All, my, all my joking aside, I'm really kind of shocked that there is no close friends exactly. live. Exactly. So we should get that going. Like, somebody who watching. And if they take this idea, you owe her a check. And just, yeah, for real. Because, like, all I'm those badges it. and shit, you got to give her, like, 0.01% of, like, the, every badge that goes to every close friend exactly. from now on. Exactly. The other thing you were... All right, I got a few more. Hold on. Um, <laughs> chicken is a term of endearment. <laughs> like, make like explain that. Break that one like, down to me. you call... Okay, for me, like... I'll call my friends, I'll call my boyfriend, I'll call them chicken. Like, hey chicken. You never heard of that? Or chicky? No. Like, it's cute. That's like an I have a few friends that do that it's also. Like I'm not the thing. only one. Like, chicken? Nope. I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> you call your friends chickens? Yeah. <laughs> All hey right. chicky. 
Hey girl. <laughs> okay, hey Chick chicken. Chicky is crazy. Um <laughs> what else? What else? Uh what does it what does it do for someone when they pay for the blue check? I really want to know. I'm actually right on the same page with you with that. <laughs> Some people are gonna be mad about this. No, I mean I, but why are you buying a blue check to begin with? No, right. That's what that's my thing. Yeah. Like, who are you trying to be seen by if you don't do something that requires a blue check? To have, yeah. Like what's the purpose? Right. And that's all I have to say about that. Like, and I think it's dumb because, like, when you buy the blue check, especially on, like, Twitter, it tells you that this person has bought the blue check. That's, like, $15 yeah. a month? Some shit like that. That's crazy. Some sh but it doesn't it let you edit tweets? With it? I don't even care. The point is, like, I don't think anybody should be buying blue checks on anything. Because, like, no. you could tell if, like, like there are people who I, who I know... I don't care if they see this. Um, there are people <laughs> who I know who, like, I could just tell that they bought the blue check. I'm like, bro... Sis, why did you buy the why did you buy the blue check like not you don't do anything that would require right. you to have the blue check i mean if you wanted the specific features that come with it on like twitter i get it i kind of, just want to be seen and i feel that but mm. you know there's other ways right you don't have to pay 15 dollars a month that's like a whole that's that's like lunch no nah, for real that adds up that's lunch that's like a apple music or a spotify plan for real i don't know why you're buying these blue checks no nah, i don't get it either um, what else did I write down? Oh, I feel like this one, I also, I wrote this one down because I felt like you and I were watching the same video. Um, you said Ray should not have scary visuals. Oh my what God, the fuck? yes. It was on TikTok. Were you talking about the, the Shrek shit? It was a Shrek one and then there was another one. I didn't uh, see, I don't know. I only saw the Shrek one, I think. The Shrek one was scary because Shrek is not supposed to be like, that's the joke of Shrek. He's not supposed to be scary. Right. You know what I mean? And then the other, the other rave that I saw was like. It was like a alien, like, um, I don't know if you've seen that show um, where they ha where they have like mushroom heads and it's like uh, <laughs> an apocalypse. Oh. Something like that. But basically the <laughs> guy the had a mushroom. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fucking What's crazy. What's it called? Uh, Last of Us or something? The Last of oh, Us. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh. Yeah, You're yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, the zombies yeah. having like the, yes. okay, gotcha. And it, yeah. they showed, and that's creepy. And they showed that at a rave. Like, you know that people are going to be doing drugs. They're not going to be in their right mind. They yeah. came to have a good time. Why are, you, why are you showing visuals like that? That's a fact. I ain't going to lie. It's not okay. <laughs> if I was on drugs, don't do drugs, kids. If I was on drugs, though, I'd be wilding. I'd be like, yo, take me to the medical tent right now. Right. I'm, I'm literally about to break down. Why do you want to mess with people's minds like that? I, I don't think it's nice, honestly. So. I don't think it's, that's what I you're going to tell the DJ? Yes. Like, I think it's very mean that you had these, is mean. these scary visuals. It is not good. Hopefully they change that. I, do you go to a lot of raves or no? I don't go to a lot. I don't go to as many as I would like to go to, but I have been to. Okay. And I've been to like Coachella and okay, like yeah, yeah, yeah. festivals and stuff. Adjacent type of yeah, situations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing that, I, the last thing I wrote was like, you were talking about meditating to New Blue Sun and the visuals are oh my God. insane. What is like your meditation routine? Like, what do you do to meditate? Teach me because um, I don't, I'm really, I can't. I think that. My ADHD is crazy. People or before people start getting into meditation, they mm. think that you have to do it specifically. But I think it's just specific to everybody um, and what your schedule is and how you live your life. Right. Even if you just take a few moments to yourself, um, maybe just like in a quiet space or um, really anywhere, you could just close your eyes and let your mind kind of just just breathe. And I start with my breath first. I, I try to regulate my breathing to just make it very deep and tranquil and get in that space mm. and then i let my mind take me to where i feel like it needs to go i don't think it's as as uh complicated as people make it seem um but i would start with that like it's not really anything super specific but there's also things that you can go um online to to research and uh like a medit like a um guided meditation yeah so you could start with those types of things and um See if you like it. But what I was saying um, on my tweets about New Blue Sun, which is um, the Andre 3000, yep. uh, a lot of people don't like it, but I fuck with it, like, so heavy. Because um, I, I like that type of music. Sometimes it's not always about, like, rap or it's not always about um, words. Mm. You can just feel something um, from instrumentals. Yeah. And I think that's really cool that he stepped outside and did that um, and showed his versatil versatility. And that's just the place where he's in in his life also, mm. which I think is really cool. 
Um, but yeah, it's a really cool uh, album to meditate to. <laughs> Fire. Shout out Three Sex. Yeah. Well, look, that's all I got from your Twitter. I'm going to be honest. That's, it. that's all I got. <laughs> but um, EP on the way. Uh, yes. Lovers and Friends. Get y'all tickets. You know what I'm saying? Um, performance out now. Freestyle out now. Go run both mm -hmm. those up. Uh, gag out now. Stream that. And before you get up out of here, uh, anything else you want to let the people know? Um, whether they can follow you at all that good stuff. Now it's time to do it with the camera on the right, right here. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and also YouTube um, at Malizan. Boom. There you go. Make sure you go follow her. Uh, go run up all the videos we have out now. Go run up Gag. Um, go show her some love. Go show her some support. Love is free. Support is free. Them tickets to Lovers and Friends is not free, but go buy them anyway. Till next time, Malizan on the radar. We out. Bow. Appreciate you. <laughs>